In this lesson, I'm going to talk about colliding our particles with our geometries in the scene, which is going to be a very short and easy lesson. This is the final result. As you can see, the particles are colliding with the floor. I can even add more geometries in my scene, and they're going to always collide with them. So let's see how I've created that. Here's the Niagara system that I'm having. This is the ending result, so I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to turn on the particle simulation that... I've just created for this tutorial. It's just a simple particle simulation with a spawn burst instantaneous module added to that. I'm spawning 200 particles only once and my emitter state is set to infinitely loop through this uh, emitter. I'm only having a couple randomized scales for the particles. I'm also emitting them from a sphere location, nothing that fancy. Adding some gravity here, some drag, some wind force, current noise force. I'm also scaling down the particles over their time and changing their colors over time. I'm rendering them using sprite renders so I can see the particles as well as I'm adding some light renderer here as well so I can see some light casting on the ground, on the floor as well. Again, these are all just aesthetic choices. All right, so let's see how we can add the collision here. The collision is just one simple module. It's called collision. You just need to add it to your particle update, not the particle spawn. It needs to be included in the solver as well, meaning that it has to be before the solver. So I'm gonna hit fix we need to deal with at least two parameters, the bounce parameter and the friction parameter. Let's just immediately go back in the scene and see the result of it. So here's our immediate result. You can see that all the particles are bouncing up and down on the floor. Of course, we need to change some of the parameters to make them more natural. One of the issues here is that all of these particles, regardless of their weight, regardless of their size, they're all bouncing with the same amount. So we need to make it more random. So I'm going to go back to my emitter on the collision module. On the bounce, you can see that it's set to 0.6. This bounce of 0.6 means that when the particles collide with something, they lose 40% of their energy and still they maintain 60% of it. So they bounce back. And in the next bounce, they lose 40% of their energy, 40%, 40% until they lose all of their energy. So if you want them to bounce less, we need to bring this down, which means that they maintain less amount of energy when they hit something. So I'm going to turn it down to 0.1 and we're going to see the result here. You can see that they're not bouncing that much anymore. Just for comparison purposes, I'm going to increase that to full value of 1, meaning that they, they won't lose any of their energy and they keep bouncing and bouncing. In real world, we cannot go beyond a value of 1, but in CG, we can always change this value to something higher than that, which is not going to be real because there is no way for them to gain energy. So now you can see they hit the ground and for some reason they gain energy and their bounce is having twice more energy than when they hit the ground. So I'm going to go back to 0.5. The next thing that I'm going to do is since I want this bounce to be random for each one of the particles, I'm going to change this value to be a range rather than a fixed value for all of the particles. So I'm going to add a range here. And for the range, I'm going to pick a range that allows me to have some particles to not bounce at all, some particles to bounce a bit. So I'm going to keep the minimum to zero. So again, some of them will not bounce at all and they will just slide on the ground. I'm going to decrease this value of maximum to be not fully bouncy particle, but something around 50%, maybe in this case, to have them bounce by 50% of their energy. Now you can see the result. They're randomly bouncing, which is more natural. Very well. And of course, you can always play with these. This is the first parameter that you always need to deal with when you're dealing with collisions. The next one is friction. The friction is a force that when two objects are sliding on each other, they actually lose some of their energy because of that friction. So we need to introduce that here as well, because right now you can see that all the particles that are sliding on the ground, they, are, they just keep going. We need to hold them back a bit. So we need to have some friction here to be able to control them a bit more. So for the friction, for comparison purposes, again, I'm going to increase that dramatically to a value of 1. You can see some of these, since they are smaller, they hold to the ground. For comparison purposes, I'm going to increase that again much, much higher than that. And you can see they stick to the ground and they do not slide. In physics, again, similar to the bounce, the bounce shouldn't go beyond one. Friction can't go beyond one as well. But again, since we are not in the real world, we can always play with that and increase that to any amount that we want. Similar to the bounce, we need to have some randomness. So I'm going to change this fixed value of friction to a range. And for the range, I'm going to choose 
I, I always want to have some friction so I won't see sliding particles on the ground. It's a personal preference. So I'm going to start from point two and have some of them to really stuck to the ground. I'm going to turn on the light renderer. And here we go. Just to see how they react to any other geometry in the scene, I'm going to add some simple geometries here too. So I'm going to add these linear stairs. You can see they will collide with any geometry that you add in your scene. I'm going to delete this one and add a wall maybe, or a box. This is very nice. One thing that also I need to mention about this post-process volume geometry that we have here, if you remember from last lesson, I enabled the unlimited extent on it. Infinite extent. It's, it's turned on, meaning that I can simply bring this down and get it out of the way so I won't see that in my scene. All right, so that's it for this collision lesson. See you in the next lesson.